Okay. This okay. conference will now be recorded. All right. <clears throat> so for the purposes of this record, welcome everybody. My name is Rod Soto, and I am one of the co-founders of Hack Miami and also the Pacific Hackers Meetup Conference and Pacific Hackers Association nonprofit organization. I welcome you today. We meet every two weeks. We um, basically focus on researching in uh, information security subjects, uh, hacking culture, hacking grassroots, uh, and uh, cybersecurity industry in general. Uh, today, we're going to have a, 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 a incredible presenter. His name is Jawari. Jawari is a, a success story uh, of uh, uh, one of our organizations. Uh, he, uh, I met him at the um, Padron campus in Miami Dade, and he was very eager to break into cybersecurity. And he worked very hard, um, put a lot of time, investment, in, in studying and researching, and 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 interacted with all of us. And he's now uh, a cybersecurity professional. And uh, today he's going to give us a presentation of uh, the cloud penetration testing 101. The reason why I say this is because I want to encourage all of you who may not be in the industry yet or they want to break into cybersecurity to come and join us and to follow paths like uh, Jawari. Um, there are many others that, that, that are very successful, and um, uh, please join us. Please come to the meetings. Uh, don't be shy to reach out to us uh, at the Discord. We also have a Slack, but um, we're shifting to Discord for for most of the other hacker spaces to have everybody with each other. This presentation would be uh, published. And our in Hack Miami YouTube channel, and uh, the slides will be uh, shown uh, posted in the Hack Miami GitHub channel as well. Uh, one more time, September uh, October 30th, Hack the Flag. Don't do not miss that event. It's a great event. Um, then there's possible. <clears throat> we haven't yet um, announced it, but it's likely to be a in-person meeting. We're also trying to do an in-person meeting on the West Coast as well uh, that will involve uh, activities such as uh, lock picking, hacking drones, hacking Bluetooth, and then finally see if we can see each other again. So please stay tuned and we will announce soon. And with that, I'm going to give it to uh, Jawari and um, uh, take it away, man. All right, all right. Thank you, Rob, for the introduction. Uh, let me share my screen here. All right, does everybody see my screen? I think so, right? Yes? Okay. I can see it, yep. All right. Um, so, a little bit of introduction about myself. Um, I, I, was, uh, I was in the Navy for five years. Uh, then after that, I decided to go get a bachelor's in chemistry and biology. Then after that, <laughs> I decided to uh, go to dental school. So um, let me let me change this one second. Here. Let me turn off my camera. So it's not in the way. How do I turn it off? One second. There you go. All right. So it's not in the way in the screen. So um, a little bit more about myself. So then I, uh, I I was a teacher. That's where I left off. I was a teacher in high school for about four years. Since I'm a veteran, I decided to go back to school. I met Rod at Miami Dade College, and then I'm here um, working towards my career in cybersecurity. So, so this is something that I don't see it as a job. I see it more as a profession. So I think it's, it's something that it's important to see it as because once you see it as a as a profession, then it's easier for you to spend all the time studying and doing all of these things. 
Okay, so let's start. Introduction to cloud pen testing. I am sharing th this documentation. Um, this documentation I will share is a form of PDF. Um, I'm using Obsidian here. Obsidian is a great tool not only for um, for to write the write-ups, but also as a to take notes as a penetration tester, as a cybersecurity analyst, as a SOC, NOC, etc. As any professional in the industry or anything else. So these are the major uh, cloud pen, cloud um, providers that we have. Of course, Google, AWS, uh, Azure, Linode, and DigitalOcean. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to try to demonstrate a phishing attack against Office 365. Okay, um, and maybe um, if I can set up AWS, I can try to uh, just simulate a copy a, a bucket uh, to the uh, CLI where we could um, see that it may not have enough permissions um, that user specifically. So, so, it's, um, so it's one of those, not attack, but it's one of those configurations. Okay, so type of clouds that as a, as a security analyst, as a penetration tester, um, you, could, you need to be aware of a software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. The reason why I say that is because this is what is important, what you manage. So what you manage is what is actually um, you're gonna be attacking or allowed by the company that, you know, that you're gonna be uh, pen testing uh, against, against it. So infrastructure as a service serves the most leeway. Then follow that, it will be platform as a service, because you still manage a little bit, but the majority of it is the provider is managing. And then you have software as a service. You usually, you just probably just forging authentication um, of Office 365 because the majority is going to be managed by the provider, by Google, et cetera. <clears throat> Google, AWS, um, any other provider. This is the methodology that I came up with. Um, this is got it from Mitre attack. Of course, if you look at Mitre, it's really huge. So I, uh, I, I came up with this. I, I put some of the tools um, below it so you guys could take a link, uh, click on it, remediation, and put the CIS, which is a great information that you guys could use. I will show you how it's uh, laid up, the, one of the downloads that I acquired from, from the CIS. So basically the recon area is you want to try and find subdomains. So you want to try to go ahead and find subdomains, use your best tool here, the one that you want, and then you want to do your scanning. So you want to, if you find, I don't know, a uh, login that my, 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 uh, my domain is pesacitoinc.com. <laughs> so if I, you find login.pesacitoinc.com, then you can try to find the IP address either using MAP or uh, Masca, all right? And then we have the vulnerability. We can use Classboy, Prowler, it's an AWS tool, then the exploitation phases, and then you have post exploitation and persistence. This is where it actually gets tricky for me. I'm not an expert, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm 100% expert in cloud uh, pen testing, but I'm still need to draw, I, need, I still need to troubleshoot in this uh, persistence, okay? Because what I've seen from doing cloud is um, is more of a cloud security assessment, and where you where you do the the architecture, um, you pen you pen you don't pen test the architecture, but you um, you may do the measurements of the security that they have. So things to avoid detection is the Tor bridges and then bypass guard duty to clients, okay? So DNS recon, what it does, um, it's right here. It helps find subdomains, and then you have mass scan, which helps find open ports and those subdomains as well. So mass scan, I think, is designed to uh, run through the internet really quickly and fast, okay? So what's in scope? Okay, so if I put a link here to AWS pen test inside. So basically, the EC2 instance and that uh, gateway, so like the load balancer, RDS, Cloudform, Aurora, um, and then Azure 
um, rules of engagement. So if you click on AWS pen testing, um, let me go here, it's gonna show you exactly what the customer service policy for penetration testing. So before you do anything, you wanna make sure that your client understands that this is what you are, are um, what is in scope, okay? So what is in scope and what is not in scope is critical. Because sometimes you may have a client that tells you, oh no, uh, I wanted you to test this, but then you're like, wait a minute, um, that was not in scope, so we didn't do that. We need to make sure that everything is written down. A small comparison between <clears throat> AWS and Azure is, for example, is the EC2 instances are Azure virtual machines. So this is just, it's not, that's what that's the name and the nomenclature that it uses. So private cloud, virtual private cloud is virtual network, RDS, SQL database, Azure. That doesn't mean that they're the same, okay? Doesn't mean that they're the same, but it is some similarity in the service that they provide. Okay. Now scrolling down. This is important here to understand what the Microsoft Office on-prem Active Directory, what it uses, and then the Microsoft Azure Active Directory uses. All right, so as communication protocol, you use LDAP. And Microsoft Azure uses HTTPS. Authentication protocol, NTLM version two, or Microsoft Kerberos. If you're on-prem, make sure that at least they're using Kerberos. NTLM version two is susceptible to man-in-the-middle attack. It's susceptible to be used with responder tools and other uh, tools out there to capture this uh, hash. And then Microsoft Azure Active Directory, you have open authorization, I think, OAuth, um, and then SAML. I don't remember the exact. And then global structure, you have domain for tenant and subscriptions. This was interesting for me to understand because um, the idea of subscriptions, you have to have every user in a subscription kind of thing. And when you're using uh, AWS CLI, I mean uh, Azure CLI, you need to have a subscription based on that user to be subscribed to uh, to something. Uh, attack matrices. I found this link here um, on attack matrix security stacking mappings. I put it there. Um, that's one. And then I also I found this Office 365. I asked uh, from Lina Low. Lau, um, she developed this um, this matrix of attacks. So reconnaissance, initial access, discovery, actions, and persistence again. So um, we are gonna try to, what I'm gonna try to show you is actually we're gonna fish a user. Uh, the username is Orca, he's a pesacito. <laughs> and, um, and then we're gonna have we're gonna to try to have initial access. We're gonna capture the, the password if it's allowed. If it has multi-factor authentication, we might just use the token uh, for that. And then we're gonna enumerate to the email. And then the actions that we might see, we might copy a, um, a disk from Azure and then see if we can extract any hash dump from it, okay? All right, so tool to practice in the cloud. These are the tools that I uh, look into it. Um, you have, I use this one for, okay, hold on one second. Okay. I use ADAS Azure Active Directory Hunting Lab Azure Cloud Gold. We might use this in um, uh, today. Uh, since it's, uh, it's, it's really good. Let me show it to you. Basically, what it is is you have different attacks that you can create and uh, it's very easy to deploy. And once you create these attacks, you can, uh, you can start um, attacking it. Now, I have, seen, and I have seen my first plan testing. And my first, uh, it was an AWS. Um, it actually was a they had a leaky S3 bucket and I was able to get the AWS access key and the secret key and basically game over from there. Um, 
So sometimes you have an easy win, sometimes you don't, you know. All right, so um, let's set up um, fishing for Office 365. I'm gonna move this out of here. Let's go back to, to Cali. So this is, um, I'll be using Cali as my main um, uh, virtual machine. And then um, from here, I have two things. I have Goldfish and Pesticito Inc. Now, so I can put the, let me back up track here. Okay, so if you go to Pesticito, I had 305 before, but I changed it to Inc.com. All right, this is Pesticito Inc., All right? Now, it's not secure. I didn't use Starbuff for this because it's just the purpose of this. But if you go to, I think the server is down, but if you go, you change the I. I learned this from a, a course that I took that from the Cyber Mentor, the, the fishing course. It was really good. Um, you change the I for the L, and then it's going to die because my server is not on. So it's very similar to it. And especially in email, it's going to be very similar to it. So anything that has ink, you can fish it. You know, you can always take out an I and make it versus, you know, something like that. You have to play with the domains, okay? That's something that you, you have to do and be creative in that sense. Okay, so let me go to... Let me see here. Let me go to DigitalOcean and show you. Let me log in. Google. Uh, let me show you with my browser because not in Cali is not there. Let me show you here. Okay, so I have I have Goldfish set up. I have Pesacito Inc. And of course, this is the original company, right? This is the company that I'm attacking. Now, in order for you to do this, you're gonna have to have permission, of course. And it's better, it's under, and it's better that um, that the company itself buys the domain, so you don't own, you know, uh, a a a domain that is not yours. So if they buy, you tell them, hey, go ahead, buy this. And then this is what we're going to use for our fishing campaign. And then they'll be like, oh, okay, that's fine. Or, you know, whatever you guys decide and make, um, make in, in, uh, in agreement with. All right. So here, what I've, all I did it was I copy this, copy the IP address. So I went back uh, to, um, to, the, <clears throat> to one of the tabs, to one of the, and then I just root it. I just um, log in SSH. Let me just show you that. So it's easy. So file, new tab. Let me just rename this. Let's name it Goldfish. I don't know if you see this. Um, so root SSH root. And make sure that that's the right. Uh, Goldfish, I'll copy this. Yes. Uh, password. Uh, okay, so I'm in. So I'm in Goldfish. I'm clear this up. So I go to. Uh, Top of the screen. No, hold on. Clear the file, new tab. Let's open up. Um, let's open up our server. It's this one. So copy that. And this one is very easy to use. I, I found it very easy to use this uh, uh, digital ocean. It's very easy and it's very cheap. To, um, I racked up my bill in Azure to like fifty something dollars. So, yeah, playing, open up, you know, spinning out, spinning down machines, and things like that. 
So, so just be careful uh, with it. Let me SSH into that machine. Please. Not by expressing it for, for you to always have big roots because if someone were to have you to hack you, then you're root in that machine. But in any case, let me, what's the password here? Okay, so as we have that, so once we have this, let's start Goldfish. So I think it is. Uh, let's do sudo Goldfish. Okay, so it will give you, it will tell you the port that you will have to open up. So just copy that. It's basically uh, port 3333. So let's just go back here to local holes. Well, maybe you have to use HTTPS. Oh. Why are you not? Oh, <laughs> oh my God. It's not local host, guys. It's, <laughs> it's a server, it's a Goldfish server. <laughs> I need to get the IP. Okay. Go to droplets again, go fish, uh, copy the IP here. So we should have it here. This is CPS and the IP. And then 3333. Okay, advance, set risk. There you go, we see go fish. Sign in, perfect. Okay, so from here, um, now let's set up the other. Now we have Goldfish running. Now here, let me see what I have here. Okay, we have Goldfish too, but in this one I better use it. Um, here, what I can do is activate Evil Engine X, which is, I forgot to mention, that's the tool we're using, we're using Evil Engine X. Okay, so we're using this. I already had tested it before, so I, I was able to get the, it was an active session still, so if you click, if you type sessions, it will tell you, this is actually the password. I think this is the same password, but it tells you that this is the date that it was acquired on, okay? So it was the 24th, which was yesterday, um, when I acquired this the remote IP. So let's see if this works right now, it works now. And then we're actually gonna set up a, um, a because I left it with a multi-factor authentication for the purpose, and then I'm gonna set it up with multi-factor authentication. So let's set up the campaign. Uh, so campaign. No campaigns are created. You have to create an email template. So basically, you uh, new template right here. Then when you create a new template, this is what's gonna show up. Uh, first name, the first name will be Pesacito. Your mailbox in your Microsoft Office uh, in Microsoft 365 is full. Please log in here to reduce space. And best you can put um Pesacito admin this, this is from the admin so be creative this is important how creative you are so it saves the template landing page really is not gonna matter uh you can leave it blank because we're gonna use the microsoft the link provider 
by Evo Engine X. We're going to use it for that. Uh, sending profile. This is where you need to set up. Yeah, you're right. I don't need to sudo. I'm already rude. Yeah, it's just a habit that I have. If you notice from my machine here, I have Jamasta Kali. So it's a habit for me to do uh, uh, sudo all the time. But in any case, thank you for that, Jake. Okay, so where was I? Okay, so I I created an email, which is where it's gonna be facilitated from, and uh, and this is the host uh, IP address, uh, port twenty five SMTP. Okay, All right, let me cancel that, and then go to campaigns. Got a new campaign name. Let's name it. We are attacking at Pasacito Inc. Okay. So the URL. This is going to be the group. It's going to be Pasacito, which I didn't show you. I think this is in the users and groups. So right here, you can create your own groups. And there are two users that I'm be attacking. One is Orca, the other one is Pasacito Marillo. So I'll be attacking those. <clears throat> okay, let me create the campaign. Okay. So now it tell you well, two emails have been sent. There's two emails right here. Okay, so let's go. We should send an email to uh, Orca and Pasacito Marillo. Let's log. In. Let's go to their to their email. Um, I have a, I even bought a uh, Office 365, so that'll be. Let's go to Office. Sign in. Let's go use another account. Let me use my browser here because the Kali is not. Okay. Um, let's do this, but this is not the one that I want. Oh yeah, I did it. Orca. Okay, so let's go to the Outlook. Now this user hasn't set up multi-factor authentication, but for the purpose now, uh, for one of the purpose, I'm just gonna skip this for now. Okay. Now I think I sent. Um, okay, so this is the problem that I was facing. As you notice, it's set in Microsoft um, uh, Outlook is putting them in junk mail, okay? And I was facing this, uh, someone can help me eventually to to um, take it out of junk mail and put it in the inbox is difficult. So uh, to set up, maybe I didn't set up the post fix right, um, and that could be a problem. But eventually this is the email. now. I, I forgot to do something. I didn't put the link. Okay, so let me do it again. It's gonna be quick. Now, first, before we do anything, so I need to make sure I get the link from uh, that I'm gonna use. So, in from the initial steps, you have to do config, domain, and then the domain that you're that you're using. Okay, so for this one is Pesacito. L N C I dot com. All right. And then you need to put the IP address. So config. Let me clear so it's at the top. So we just put the domain. Now we put the IP address. So config IP. All right. And then let me get the, the IP address of digital ocean. Okay, paste that there. Okay, 
and then you do fishlets. Host name is going to be office, so it's an O365. And then the domain, which is let's just see here. Com. Okay. Oh. One second here. Uh, we did config, config IP, fish late. Uh, I think I just have to enable it because I already have it. Fish, fish lets enable oh, 365. Fishes, you need to set host name. Uh, first try fishes, host name. Okay, it doesn't matter. Me. Fish let. Oh, it's fish let. I might have put fish let. Host name. Um, all 365. Um, this is Cito Inc. Why are you not operating? Oh. Uh, the domain. Okay, now you have to uh, enable it, like it says it's disabled here, so you have to enable it. Again, I go with my spelling. Sorry guys. There you go. So um, it's going to look for login. So basically what happens here is that um, it successfully set up SEL's uh, TLS certificate. So when you go back, the tricky part here is that when you go back to your domain, uh, let's see here, I did it in its networking domains, uh, Pesicito Inc. You have to have it as an A record. Okay, it may take some time to do it, but I have difference here. But login is important that you have it, and your WW is important that you have it, like it's asking you here to have it. Okay, now what we do is we say lures uh, get URL. I think this is oh no, lures create uh, 0365. 0365. Okay, so now you do lures get URL and then the ID here, which is one. Okay, so just copy this. And this is what we're going to send to our victim. Okay, copy the link address. Um, and here, delete this campaign. Campaigns. Let's delete this and get confused. New campaign. Okay. <laughs> it can get confusing. 
okay sorry i actually have to do the email template we have to change that because uh, how are they going to get the link okay so html uh, here so here so so link all right changes the protocol okay and this is the display text so just click okay you save template you go back to campaigns you add a new campaign <clears throat> you name your campaign Uh, select the group of people that you're sending them to, and you launch it. Okay, so now we go back to our email inbox. Okay, here. Back to our email inbox, and you see that it has another um, email with the link. Okay, yes, Mario, this will be posted um, on Hack Miami uh, website. And, uh, and that, the presentation should be on, um, I think on GitHub, if I remember correctly. All right, so we click here. Everything looks normal, you know, everything's fine. We're trying to sign in. It may take a little bit of time, but as the regular user, you don't see anything different. So you see Pesacito Amarillo was already here, but no, I'm Orca. So <clears throat> let me do Orca. I uh, Pesacito Inc. .com. Click next. Center a password. Oh my God. Um, oh yeah, it was. Okay, sign in. Okay, this is the tricky part. <clears throat> For now, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip it. Many people may skip it, many people don't. But I'm gonna show you both. Uh, let's set up multi-factor uh, after this. So let's skip that. And nothing. Everything here is normal. So where? What did Evil Genix do for us? Well, if you look here, this is the password that I typed, and that's the username. Okay. So it captured, it was a man in the middle attack where he captured the password that I put um, uh, with as well as the username, okay? So now we can say <clears throat> sessions, and you can see it will be a new session, right? So this is the new session that started here, okay? We can do this with Facebook, we can do this with different uh, fish lists that, I think it's fish, fish um there are many fishlets here you can even create your own fishlet as well okay so that's the first part the first part is to fish it now let's let me see if i can enable authentication real quick um, let's go here forgot um, let's do next. Instead of skip, we do next. I'm going to set it up with my iPhone. So the password. Okay. Set this up. Set it up. Okay. Let me do this okay let's try it out approve okay should work okay next um okay so Let's try to fish. I think Pesacito Marillo has it already, but let's try to fish Orca again. Let me sign out. 
So Orca was smart enough this time, and she decided that you know these are these were scams. I guess. Empty folder. Yes. Okay. Let's do another one. I see. I don't know why it's not. It should tell you the email was open, how many emails were open, how many people would click, and then actually. This is what we want. Well, well, we know the submitted data because we can see it from from our, from here from our fish lens. You know, we can see that they submitted the data. But just for record purposes, I need to fix that. Um, okay, let me go back the campaign. Let me delete this campaign. Campaign delete it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use the same link. Same link should work. Who's this? Is it Orca? Let's find out. Orca too. Okay, let's go to the inbox. Let's go to delete it. Let's go here. Let me log out of office here so it doesn't interfere. So in the in, okay so behind the wall what we're looking at I read a new link actually. Someplace and just change the link. Okay. Okay, go back to office. Okay, Let's see here. Chunk, this is the newest one, 52, yes. So now, 
it should be a little different because now I have multi-factor authentication when I log in. But let's go back and see what EvilGenix is doing. So let's see here. Color Orca. I don't think I set it up right. You have to log out of uh, of your session to force it to refresh. Oh, okay. In Vault 365. Oh, Vault 365, yes, 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 yes. I can use another browser too, so. We'll do this. Okay. Yeah, I should have used the word. Use Google Chrome instead. Go to office. Okay. Maybe I should face somebody else. Oh. To lower it to sixty five. Okay. Three. to change the template. I'm going to change the
Okay. So we just got this email. Click here, fixes to sign in. Sometimes it takes you to get a little longer than anything. So Let's see what happens in, oh no, I captured the password. Hmm. That happened to me too when I tested against a friend and kept capturing the password, not the whole token. Well, the point is yeah. that we have, when, uh -huh. when, yeah, when you sign in, the thing is when you say stay sign in, it caches the session. So oh. log out, yeah, log out and don't tell it stay sign in. By the way, um, when you when users do that, you can literally take the uh, the cookies by a mimi cat, but that's not what we're talking today. But yeah. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's awesome. I did I just, uh, just go ahead and everywhere. It clears everywhere. That's it. I clear cookies, browsing history, everything. So let's see. Oops. You know what? Let me. No. Oh, I could, yeah, I know. I had to put no. Shit, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Let me clear the. Maybe if I clear the settings again. So here we put no, right? Users. Yeah, say no. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the email. I'm gonna log out from the other session. Just to make sure I'm gonna copy the link address, right? I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna log out from here. Log out from here. Okay. Then I'm just going to paste the link here. 
And let's see what you will do next. Just to, uh, don't tell me I have to create a new link. No, 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 no. Let me create a new link real fast. It won't take long. All it is is lure is create. Mm, oh no, it collected it, but this one was the last session, not the one that. Um, Okay, there you go. Yeah. I'm just going to paste the URL in the the browser, so I don't mess with the sessions here. Yeah, copy paste. Oh no! It's hard to do a live one through this and. Let's see what's doing you in Genex. Okay. Okay. Oh, it captured the, it's not capturing the token. I don't know why. Um, but, but you got the, the password from it. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's the back end that the Office 365 has, is not affected yet for the account for the double authentication. That's why it's not catching it. Mm, okay. You have to be, okay. No problem. No problem. All right, so imagine that we already captured the password. And um, and from here we can do many things. If 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 for example, if we if we we can go through their emails, right? And that's one of the things that uh, we would do. So you just go through the emails here. Let's say that we log in as the as the person. Okay, so it's not. Oh already have the password so because i click no that's why so here for example you know some people tend to send information through via email especially um passwords etc here we tend to have we have the access key and the secret key well, we know better not to do that, but sometimes people tend to be lazy and do it, okay? You wanna use a secure um, ways of doing it. Um, I think there are services out there that allows you to send secure link between um, uh, each person. So we can do that. So when it comes to this, so we can try to log into AWS from here. So I already have, um, I think it's already, I think it's already configured, but uh, no, that's not the access key. So I need to copy this access key, paste it here. Access secret key, it's the one that we just saw. Okay. 
okay and then default region i'll leave it as uh, us is one okay enter and then enter okay so that's aws so if you want to do anything in the aws cli we can do um but we also can have the password so if they have aws they may have azure account as well okay so we can go to portal To log in in Azure, um, what we do is we say AC login. This is another one that I let me use another account. I think Orca is signed up in Azure, but I'm not sure if I set it up right. If I set it up. kicked in now yeah like right. uh no subscriptions okay i know what it is because when i set it up originally i um i was supposed to send me an email uh from the admin um so what i was trying to do is i was trying to let me see here Orca, right? I was trying to do also one from Azure. So from admin, telling them to rechange their password. And at the time, uh, my scenario was to get that password and get it, but it was a different email. So they were using a different um, um, email for that. So for Azure, they were using at jpriet005gmail.onmicrosoft.com. So that was the reason why it's the same. Let me close this. Okay. So let me do it again. So it's this one right here. I was supposed to send an email with this one uh, saying, hey, you know, make sure you change your password in, in Azure. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna set it up now, this. So it should, okay, so we're in. All right. So basically this is the information. So now I can use, you know, any commands that I want. So for example, uh, since this is just basic, we can list things. So we can say, you know, AC, um, I think it's VM uh, list. It will give you a list of the VMs that you are familiar, but a better option will be for you to say, for example, let me clear it up so it's at the top of the screen, AC VM, list all output as table and um, it gives you here the different vms that we have right i could go incognito mode yeah that's true that is. um then from here what we can do is there are different things um since we have we have access to the Azure CLI, we may have Azure as well to the portal. We can, we can create a VM, we can, um, we can create a disk um, from it. So we can say, for example, AC disk um, list, we list, okay, let me do a table instead. AC this list. Oh, after table is easier. Okay, so these are the different disks that you have, and this is the maximum size. So you can only copy as much as 127, right? 
Now, this all depends on the right of, of Orca, right? Because that's an important. So looking up, um, I think it's in AWS, it's AWS. Let me see how you look at the profiles. Okay, cool. Okay, quick this. So subscription ID. So this is the one. I did the ad hunting lab. Okay, so how do I look for permissions? I want to know my my permissions. It's one of the first things you want to look into it. So let's see, I forgot the command for that. So it'll be Azure. CLI permission usage. Let's see here. Okay, so this is not, we will have to um, convert this into, put it into a text file, and then from there, um, use grab or awk to do it. But basically, I can see that um, there are different members here, Jawari, Orca, Jamasta, and Dolphin. Um, but this is not helpful. But let's see if we can, we saw those disks, okay? So since we saw those disks, we can go ahead and see if we can create a VM from those disks. So AC disk, there's a table. So this one seems, let me see, workstation, what is a workstation? So most likely let's, let's just do this one right here. So VAC. I need to get the, the, I, the snapshot that we have. Name of the disk. Let's just do this one. Let's see if he does it like this. Worry, I just want the ID. Output. TS3. Oh, I'm missing the resource group. Okay. So I need to do a C. First, before this, um, I'm getting a step here. Is Azure Explorer then? No. 
create well, the thing is we have to create a snapshot and the way that i that i wanted to do it is use uh, azure storage explorer because once we create a snapshot then we can use that to uh to to use the disk and the snapshot and then create a vm okay that's what that was my plan um but let me where did I install it? Oh. Oh, you know what it is? <laughs> So why can you not find it? Oh, okay. Okay, so it's asking me to do that. Let's see if he's there. There we go. So it's a issue with Microsoft Let me see if it's because of this. No. Sorry about that guys. It was supposed to it was working on Okay. That's all right. You can you can move on to the next uh, the next step. Okay. Yeah, because the thing is, I needed um, my whole thing was that I wanted to. The whole method behind the madness it was for me to create a snapshot using Azure uh, Explorer. And then from there, I was going to um, to create a disk, and then with that disk, you create a VM, you know. Okay. And then SSH into it, and from there we could use like you know Mimikatz or something to dump the hashes. Right. I, that, that's the methodology that I, I wanted to use, but it's not. Um, so but maybe. Mm -hmm. The disk you were gonna take. So basically, what the methodology is: find a disk from somebody else, create, yes. create the VM, log in the VM, dump the hashes, and now move laterally. Is that what you wanted to do? Yes, yes. That's the that's that was what I wanted that's to do. Cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, that's fine. And and then there's also ways in where you can actually let's see VM. You can run commands. So you can do uh, run command. Um, invoke um, command ID. This is something that I learned is pretty cool. You just you have to try it 
So we're gonna run PowerShell script. Uh, the name, just give it a name. Uh, let's do Pesacito. And I need a group. I need a group, a uh, resources group. Um, you need, you're gonna need a group here. And then once you find the group, let's see if I can find the uh, group resources that I have here. I see. I should have wrote all the commands down actually. <laughs> This might work. Okay. So we have that. So I see the M burn command invoke command ID power shell scripts name uh, proof. Then the script, if allowed, is something that you need to try. You know, it never, it never hurts. You never know if you do a net a, uh, exec. Basically, we're gonna add a user, and the user is gonna be um, uh, Tomasta, and then the the password Tomasta one two three exclamation, and then add. And let's see. Command ID, the following arguments require a command. Oh, my English is not very good looking. Command ID, nope, it's not found, it's uh, not found the resource group. Let me check, make sure I have the correct resource group. I think we can wrap um, after this. We can wrap it up because if, so if people have some questions or something, um, so I know it's getting a little late. And I yeah, took that's most fine. of the time. I that's took most of the time with this issue. Yeah, but yeah. let me ask you this: um, what, uh -huh. what, when you were creating that that user, was that user going to be created in all VMs? This one. Yeah, when you were adding the user, where where was that user gonna be added to? It's gonna it's gonna be created in yeah, I, I think it will create it. That's that's a good question. I didn't I didn't I didn't research most of it, but it will create most of the all the, all the VMs, I I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So the VMs are approved by name, right? By name, by, yeah. Okay. Oh wow. That's dangerous. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just. We I can. Just, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can. We can. If anybody has uh, questions, uh, we'll, we'll take questions now. Yeah. Let's. Let's. Uh, if you have questions, that's better. It. Ma it makes me think to my process of what I. Of what I did and and what I was doing because I'm, I'm missing certain things because it's it's hard to do a live. Uh, um, Demos are always difficult. It's, it's, yeah. it's they're always difficult. Life yeah. is, is the most hard. It's the hardest part. It's all right. You did pretty good. Thanks, man. Um, so yeah, does anybody have a question specifically how to set up the phishing environment? I think I covered. I, I took a long time doing that. Um, and then I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I set up all these commands you know, nicely and neat. Um, I would I would share with you guys. I'll put, we'll put it in. Uh, these are all the reference tool that I selected all the information from, and this is what I was trying to do. You see, I I even created a list here of what all my steps that I needed to do because I know it's a live event. So you what you want to do is you want to create uh, Azure Storage Explorer, which 
it was a pain getting it to work, but I don't know why it wasn't working. Um, and um, maybe I should have used, say, both VMs. Yeah. Okay. Even though that I did this, you know, I exported to the path. I you have to install Snap. And after that, you have to assist it. Oh, maybe that's why. Let me do this. I mean, it, it gives people idea on different uh, attacks. Um, no, it's not working. Okay, what? I'm gonna move on. So this is the internal recon. I was planning to also use Bloodhound, um, the Azure Hound, but it's too much. I put too much into this. Um, but basically, this was the idea. This the user storage explorer and you create a uh, variable snap ID which is this is a snap ID you don't need to you can not create the variable or just create this command right here uh, and then at the end here you just put the ID that you get so and you put the ID and then you create a VM you name the disk that you're gonna hack uh, so this hack, you attach it, the admin user, and then we just do the we use secret dump to um, to find any of the hashes that we have um, inside there. Usually, you know, if it's a bigger disk, uh, uh, if it's a domain controller or something like that, or a workstation that you think you might have certain information, etc. And these are the reference here all of them are here so thank you um, for the presentation thank you it's, it's been uh extensive i know uh i know that uh, evil evil jinx is is a pain he has to set up uh he takes uh, quite a bit of time and sometimes it doesn't work um and uh, uh great that you were able to set it up i didn't know about goldfish for example uh, I've seen tools like set set used to do you can do that with set too, but I had to take a look at goldfish. That's something new I learned today. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 actually really good. We use it, um, and it's um, and I don't know why it was not giving me back because it usually tells you that you know how many emails are open and how many are clicked it, and you can record it and show it to the client eventually. You know hey this is what happened and you can always take uh, a snapshot of you know of the uh, sessions in Evogenix so so if anybody has a question on how I set this up or something just tell me and I try to do my best I have a question that has more to do with like uh, pen testing in general um, so uh, in your work do you also, in your contracts, have to specify um, what kind of tooling you'll use? Um, and that is, I'm thinking about, for example, if a company um, is has like a policy um, against using certain open source software uh, or certain um, licenses, um, like it, I guess I'm wondering if that's a restriction that you have to keep in mind when you go into engagements. That's a good question. Go ahead, Rod. No, I wasn't gonna say anything. Go ahead. Oh, okay. No, I was gonna say that. Yeah, I mean, you wanna, you wanna make sure that everything is is known by the uh, the client, and the client states there. Okay, if you don't want me to use Evogenix, then stay. You know, because then I won't use it. But open sources of what I've seen, everything is is on the table because. A real attacker is not gonna is not gonna discriminate between Cobalt Strike and Metasploit. If he's gonna use a Metasploit um, 
it would use it. It's gonna use Cobalt Strike, it's gonna use Cobalt Strike, it's gonna use uh, just a brand new uh, POC for a specific uh, CBE that, you know, it's gonna use it. So I don't know, maybe maybe there is a begin with big corporations, you know, but so far I haven't seen it that it tells me, no, you cannot use this tool. Okay, so follow-up question is basically there's so many tools out there, right, that you can use, and you just showed a litany of them for cloud penetration testing, um, mm -hmm. and even within the Azure space, how do you um, cull down, like basically how do you select the ones that you think are relevant for a test as a beginner? As a beginner, um, I mean, okay, so the, the whole madness is that you, you first have a scanning tool, right and you tend to guide yourself sometimes by that at least as a, as a junior penetration tester that i am you know um so i guide myself of that but when you're doing the cloud they usually the client will tell you okay here is a username and password use your access or aws secret key or access key and you only have read only uh access okay and then basically you try as either you try to fish them like we just try to do or basically you'd go from the inside and see their security posture you know but um that's 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 what i've been doing so far i see that you said if nobody else has questions oh my god please like stop me because I, I just like never stop asking <laughs> questions okay go ahead, Amy. Okay, so I see that you said like understanding the architecture, the overall architecture of whatever system that you're testing is very important. Um, I mean, is do you have any tips for doing that? I know that you are going to provide obviously the documentation um, that you showed on screen with the PDF and everything, but um, yeah, even for me, like from an AppSec perspective, like as a beginner in app in AppSec in general, like I have to do the same sorts of things, like with threat modeling. Um, so, so like, what are some of your tips? Okay, well, a big tip that I found from an employer, from a from a coworker, was um, he uses the CIS benchmark. Have you heard about them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he. he I mean, to mitigate risk, I guess they use a lot of the CIS uh, benchmark, but as, okay, so in my career as a young penetration tester, um, I'm learning about the tools, right? So I think myself as a carpenter. Why do I say that? Because carpenters use tools, right? But then when they get, when they go through age, right? You go through a process of time that everybody goes through, and this process, eventually you start learning how on the whys of the tools. And that's where I'm at right now. So as, as the point side of as a developer, um, that part, I am just seeing the side of the destruction side. <laughs> I'm not seeing the side of the, I'll be honest, of the developer and dealing with a mess, you know? So I don't know if I, if yeah. I say too much or no, 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 you said you said it correctly. I, I think that though that there is like overlap in these two domains, and I think we could learn from each other. Maybe I'm wrong because mm. I'm new. It's it the, so the challenges that I face are more like okay, so how do we extract um domain? Sorry, how do we extract like tribal knowledge, apply domain knowledge that maybe I don't have um within uh, a particular application catalog, and then like you know, create um, actionable items, if you will. So it's, 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 it's a similar process if you really think about it, or at least there's like some overlap in some, in some of these things, like, uh, except that I think you end up doing more like unknown environments and not getting a lot of help necessarily from, from uh, service teams, for example. Yes. Okay. okay, yeah, so in my case, I can ask for that. But like, nonetheless, if I could think like a red teamer, <laughs> or oh, more like awesome. a resume. I feel like I could, I could, I could learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. I think that's. And I, if I, if I can, if I can get the insight, and I think I'm gonna get it while it goes through time. I said, mind of a developer, then I, that make me a, a a better assessor. You know, 
I don't sometimes I uh, just call me an assessor. That's all it is because it I assess the uh, cloud environment with the uh, CIS benchmarks and as well as uh, some penetration uh, techniques that you use. Anybody else has another question? <clears throat> No, no questions for me. I was in and out. Um, I got in kind of late, so I, I was playing catch up. That's why I asked about the video so I can start from the beginning so I can fill in those gaps. No problem, man. I just wanted to thank you for having such a thorough presentation and like going through all these mistakes and then like troubleshooting. I think that's <laughs> the process. Yeah, yeah. It's, I guess. Yeah, it's tools break all the time. Um, and I, I remember when you told me, I'm going to put evil jinx on it. Like, ay, ay, ay. It's like, <laughs> I, I, I've used it before. And it's, it's, it, it, there's a learning curve. And then there is, you know, the record doesn't update. Um, the user press stays signed. You know, there are many variables uh, that may affect how the, 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 the lures or the or your your setup works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was it, it took me some time to uh, um to understand how the all the domains and everything worked and to set it up. It was not that easy. Ooh, one final question. Promise, okay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. in a general sense, right? What do you think is the difference um, besides like tooling and all that? Um, between pen sorry testing or assessing an environment that is mostly or almost entire sorry that is mostly on prem versus a cloud environment i was thinking scale is is one general theme right but like basically how does that affect your strategy if at all hmm. um from my experience i have when okay, when doing um, internal external penetration testing, you there's a different methods, right? You, from external side, I think the first part is the same, and where you're trying to fish, you know. And nowadays companies are are getting a lot better. You see Microsoft just put my email into spam right away, but uh, there are pretty sure there are people a lot, you know, pros out there that can do this better than I can. But um but as the method wise, I mean if you're in if they give you an insight, then you're inside. No matter if if you're doing cloud, of course they're gonna use different type of protocols, you know, like I like I showed the difference between OAuth and L and SAML and then Kerberos and NTLM. And then they're gonna be different ways of attacking it. But um you know, but I, I guess so. I mean, I guess they have, there are some similarities, but I don't know if Rod, that, you know, can can expand on that. Uh, it depends on the, what you're trying to assess, which is, I like, that's why I like the way you started it. Like, you have to see first, what is it that, that you are testing, meaning the type of cloud service. And then from there, there are different strategies. So it's not like one single thing. It, there is, and this is the point also of this presentation, the pen testing the cloud is not the same thing as going into a perimeter uh, and, and and start scanning, for example. It's completely different. You don't gain anything by, by um, I guess owning a box if the, there is no data from the company in that box. You're just owning some server, some real estate from the provider, and that doesn't provide much value to the customer. But if you are able to dump a database, for example, or you're able to get some data from some storage server, then that is different. Yeah. Anybody else? I mean, I got that grip when I started back, and uh, you know, when we when we started back uh, with SEO, Amy was like, "Hey, 
to that grab history. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like, you're like, oh, I didn't record my com my commands, and I was like, well, but you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, Jay, this was uh, pretty good, and we had a, a huge crowd until the end, and I hope all of you guys learn. We're going to be publishing this on YouTube, and we're going to be publishing these lives. Um, there is, just so you guys know, there is an actual channel in Discord where these PDFs are posted, um, and uh, Jawari is in, in Discord, so you, you can ask him directly. And uh, I hope many of you, some of you that are studying understand now the dynamics of our presentations. And uh, this is great. Um, hope to see you soon uh, and keep in touch. Thank you.